these are women at war. No uniforms, no headlines. Instead, the determination to fight their part of the war and do it well. Work at Aberdeen must be done, and today it is a hundredfold more important than ever before. For years, Army Ordnance Engineers have maintained a large civilian staff of trained testing experts to help them perform the countless and exacting tests to which must be subjected every single piece of the list of Army Ordnance equipment now growing so rapidly. Together, these Ordnance Engineers and their staffs have developed the gunpowder, the cartridges, the shells, the guns, the carriers for those guns, and every kind of tank, the hundreds of weapons with which our troops are fighting today. Like countless other jobs being taken over by women everywhere in the country in order to release the men of their community for active service on the fighting fronts, the jobs at Aberdeen are a far cry from what would ordinarily be called jobs for women. A big 90 millimeter anti-aircraft gun is a powerful, noisy, heavy gun. Working with it is hard, strenuous work. By pre-war standards, these jobs are work for men only. But these ideas and phrases are peacetime ideas, outmoded by the rush of an entire nation to arms. at war, slowly learning mastery over involved and technical phases of their work, setting up and firing the intricate guns, trial elevation shooting through complicated forward area sights, determining range errors on each gun, recording highly mathematical ballistic data for the ordnance officers to study, complicated masculine work taken over by the women. Until now, these guns and tanks have been man's domain alone. Until now, that is. But in ever-increasing numbers, in a nation slowly knitting itself into one gigantic army, stretching from the home in one unbroken line out to the fields of battle, now we're learning that women can take over where the men left off. Now in time of war, each woman in a man's job means one more fighter at the front to shoot the better guns, to drive the improved tanks developed by Aberdeen's endless testing. And so in doing thus, these sturdy women are doing double service, women at Aberdeen, women at war. In modern warfare, armies must be fast-moving, far-reaching, quick. There are many units geared to meet the demands of instant mobility. And so the Quartermaster Corps of our army has put into the field this unusual unit, important to the fighting strength of every soldier in our army. It makes bread. It's a bakery. Like the fighters at the front, the soldiers of this mobile bakery unit have their own sort of weapon, too. Their mixers, ovens, bins. Their job in our army's drive toward victory for bread is one of the essentials of our fighting men. That bread, like the men who eat it, must be the very best. And so into Uncle Sam's bread go only the finest ingredients, selected carefully in the markets, transported quickly, and always measured exactly according to tested formulas. 
The flour is the finest flour made, enriched flour, into which have been added the vitamins and minerals which 40% of our civilian population sugar, the finest salt, the best yeast, only top-notch ingredients for our fighters. Carefully weighed and measured, each ingredient goes into the big barrel mixer one at a time. Salt, sugar, the yeast, shortening, smooth and creamy. And water, carefully purified and tested. The beginnings of bread. It doesn't look much like bread yet. But in 24 hours, the four soldier bakers of this Mobile Bakery will have turned out 4,000 pounds of rich, nutritious bread. 4,000 pounds of bread for fighting soldiers, hungry soldiers. The barrel mixer busily churns the ingredients together, mixing, mixing, until the flour and water and shortening and yeast have been churned and beaten into smooth, creamy dough. The first step in the business of baking bread for our army in the making. That's potential strength for our fighting forces, that dough. Potential ammunition, the quartermaster's part of the fight. Dough for dough boys, ready to be weighed and cut into loaves sizes before baking. And like every other step in the process, the measuring is specific and exact. Each piece of dough is carefully scaled, assuring perfect uniformity. Skilled hands, rapidly and quickly and efficiently cutting the loaves for mess kitchens of an entire division. From these small chunks of dough will come full golden brown loaves, swelled up above the top of the pan. The yeast does that. But instead of letting the yeast work slowly by itself, the doughy loaves are put into the big proofing box, where a steady low heat sets the yeast to work quickly. And in a short while, the tiny yeast cells have multiplied a million times, producing those big full loaves ready for the baking oven. Into the oven with them, and as they go in, finished baked loaves come out making place for the new. An endless procession of bread for our soldiers. Dough turning slowly into soft, fine textured bread. The big oven turns out four golden brown loaves every 15 seconds. 16 a minute, 960 an hour, 22,000 in a day. Slowly they revolve in the prescribed heat of the oven. An ever moving Ferris wheel apparatus which makes possible more loaves, more bread, more rich nourishment for the soldiers fighting somewhere perhaps nearby. Quartermaster ammunition for the fight. And when the loaves have been thoroughly browned, they must be allowed to cool before distribution to the troops. And so, one batch after another, they're placed on racks, cooling in the open air, waiting to be sent to the soldiers on the battle line. Bread, eaten and forgotten in a hurry, but like so much else in our army in the making, inconspicuous testimony to the care and patience of the men behind the front who provide those soldiers with the best and most efficient supplies and ammunition possibly available. Bread, packed in boxes, one for each kitchen unit, enough to supply an entire army division for one meal. And yet, the work of just four men, four men, and the efficiency of the Mobile Bakery. Bread, delivered to the soldiers fresh and soft and tasty. Another quartermaster contribution to our army in the making.